Up Paul were here inside Anfield, having just witnessed Liverpool defeat Newcastle United by three goals to one, continuing their 100% start to the season. Five wins out of five. At the moment, the five points clear at the top I means every chance by the time that the day's over. It'll be down to two points, but uh, still a good result for Liverpool, given the way that the game went in the first half in particular. It was. First 25 minutes, they, they were really sluggish, actually, Liverpool. It was an international break hangover, wasn't it? Um, they couldn't really get into the stride. Mohamed Salah barely got a touch. Sadio Mane um, and De Vaparigi ended up swapping positions, didn't they? Because neither of them were, were doing anything. And um, Liverpool were punished for it. Uh, Jesso Williams um, and Anfield Road end absolutely spanked one into the top corner with his, his unfavoured right foot. Great finish, to be fair to him. Um, and yeah, it, it took around about 25 minutes before Liverpool finally got into gear. Um, but uh, what a finish that was from Sadio yeah. Mane for, for the first goal. Um, Andy Robertson with, with great work down the left, puts inside, and uh, Mane just opens his body up, kills in, into the top corner. Martin De Bravka didn't get anywhere near it. Um, and from then, Liverpool started slowly but surely to get into gear, didn't they? I mean, yeah, you mentioned that first goal, but that was at a time when Origi was still on the pitch. He mm. went off with uh, what early indications are it's an ankle injury. I mean, Jurgen Klopp said that he twisted his ankle. He'll undergo a scan either tonight or tomorrow. We'll find out a bit more about the, the Belgian fitness. But Roberto Firmino came on from yeah. the bench. He'd been rested for the start of the game. I know we'd had a debate beforehand where I think we'd all agreed that he, he should be benched simply because of the trip that he'd had to, to yeah. the United yeah. States on with Brazil. But comes back in, continues for me. The first touch basically gets the ball off. Christian Atsu plays in Sadio Mane and then there's the, uh, his part in the second goal, well, the uh, Liverpool's third goal for uh, Mohamed Salah, where he, uh, a nice little uh, touch from one foot to the other and back heel back into the, the path of Salah. I mean, I refer to it as pure filth. <laughs> would, you, would, you, would you agree with that? Yeah, that's, I, think, I think pure filth is, is the description. Um, as I said in our match, actually just watched match of the day tonight just for that. It was unbelievable bit of skill. He rolled it with his right foot and then back heel up with his left foot. Perfectly into Salah's path, who takes it past Shah. And Shah is so despair and he ends up on his face and uh, <laughs> Salah tucks it away to make it 3-1. But um, it, was, it had a similar impact for me, you know, for me, for when he came on in the Super Cup. Um, mm. As soon as he came on, he just instantly changed the game, and Liverpool were, were clicking into gear, and things were coming off, and it, it all just centred around him, didn't it? In the middle, he was finding the passes uh, left and right, and his little party tricks, his flicks, and his his little bits of skill here and there. Every single thing he did was coming off, and um, what a Superb performance, particularly second half from him. I mean, Newcastle manager Steve Bruce had said before, said afterwards he said, "Oh, I was made up when he was on the bench because yeah. he, he's a big, obviously a big fan of Firmino and and what he can do." And he did knit the game together a bit, bit better than certainly when Origi was on. It wasn't so much about Origi going off though. I think it was, as you mentioned, that Liverpool started with Origi on the left and Mane through the middle, mm -hmm. and then they did switch, didn't they, just before yeah. Mane gets his equaliser? And Jurgen Klopp said afterwards that he admits that it was a mistake setting up like that in the first place. Yeah, it's a strange one because normally, I mean, personally myself, I think of Divock Origi as a, as a striker down the middle and I think of Sadio Mane as, as a left winger and they basically changed positions, didn't they? I know they did that last season against Watford and Liverpool absolutely battled on that day, I think it was 5-0. But uh, for me, Origi is a centre forward and Mane is a left winger. Um, so it was no surprise that as soon as they changed positions, Liverpool started to slowly but surely um, strut, strut into life, um, if you like. So yeah, I mean that change, that that positional change did kind of kick Liverpool into life a little bit. But it was, it was certainly as soon as Firmino came on, that was when they really yeah. raised the game, and everyone uh, took it up ten percent, and things were happening that weren't in the first half an hour. There were, were one or two other players who, who shone. I'm looking at Andy Robertson in particular yeah. down the left. I mean, from the first whistle, I thought he had a very good game. There, there was one instant in the in the first half where he won a tackle, yeah, and then. He played the ball, didn't he, round the defender and then won that as well and then carried on going and won a free kick and you know, the fans absolutely, you know, the, the moment, that particular moment in time, the atmosphere yeah. was particularly great, the fans buzzed off that and it seemed to, you know, infuse the team. Well, funnily enough, uh, he's, he's just been asked about that in the mix zone, that, that particular moment that seemed to um, transform the game, if you like, and he didn't really seem to, to remember much about it, he was just saying, oh, it's just one of them things that I do and... Um, it, it, that was a, a, a big moment, wasn't it? Because he, he, he carried it like 30 yards and he was getting getting pulled and, and tugged and, and held back. And it was just the sheer determination of him to get up the pitch. And um, the fans responded to that. Uh, the song started going off and everyone just kind of lifted up a little bit. So that, that was a big moment, really, when um, you think of Liverpool scoring three goals. And um, you wouldn't normally associate something like that to, to be a big deal, but it was at the time. And um, yeah, as I say, it, it was very much a. Game where Liverpool 
um, kind of drifted into it, didn't they? They didn't start great by any stretch of the imagination. And by the end of it, they were looking to, to hammer forward and back. Yeah. Newcastle, and probably should have had another day. Trent Alexander Arnold should have scored, maybe. Robertson um, had a good chance. Robertson had, had, had a good chance, yeah. yeah. Um, and Firmino was probably unlucky as well. So um, the pill deserved three points, five wins from five, and um, one start. Um, 14 successive wins now, which is the same amount as. Arsenal in 2002, Man City in 2017, Man City in 2019. So, victory at Chelsea next week, they take the, the record outright. And Liverpool are the only team out of them four to have done it while scoring at least twice yeah. in every game. That is right, yeah. And that should do us.